Hi, this is a tutorial on how to get started with the Fourscore music reading app for iPad. In this video, I'll go through the basic steps of how to import a PDF music score file into Fourscore, how to navigate around the score, where to find it in the music library, and how to make annotations. If you want to follow along with the steps in this video, make sure that you have your iPad set up to receive email. Also make sure that you've purchased and installed Fourscore on your iPad. You can find it right here in the App Store. The first step to get started with Fourscore is to import a PDF music score file into Fourscore. Now, there are several ways to do this. Fourscore supports importing by email, web download, Dropbox, Bluetooth, iTunes, um, scanning from your iPad camera, and in-app purchases from Fourscore Sheet Music Store. And I'll cover those different methods in future tutorials on my YouTube channel, but for now let's use one of the simplest methods, which is email. So the first thing to do is go to your computer and send yourself an email that contains the PDF music score file as an attachment and be sure to send that to the email account that you have set up on your iPad. Once you've done that you can go over to your iPad open up the email app and then bring up the email that contains the attached PDF score. And once you've done that tap on the PDF attachment and that'll show it in the viewer and then you can tap the screen again to bring up that toolbar and tap the action button in the top right corner and then open in and then scroll through this list and find four score and then tap that and voila you've just imported a score into four score and so some of the first things that you might want to know about working with your score is how to turn pages, and that's pretty simple. You can tap uh, on the, the right edge of the score to turn pages forward, and likewise tap on the left edge to turn backwards. And you can also use a swipe gesture to do page turns. So swipe from right to left to turn the pages forward and left to right to go backwards. And you may also notice that at the bottom of the screen, there is a slider, and you can use that to get around the score quickly. So if I tap on that and slide it around, you can see that um, it tells you what page you can go to and also shows a thumbnail of that page. So that's an easy way to jump from place to place within your score. The next feature you'll want to know about is the menu bar, and you can access it by tapping in the center of the screen and likewise you can dismiss it by tapping again in the center of the screen. So you'll notice in the menu bar in the top center is the file name of the PDF file that you just imported and if you tap on it you can get access to some information about the file and what you want to do is as soon as you import the file, or pretty soon thereafter, you'll want to go into this window and change this information to make sure that it's accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and correct the title of this piece. And then correct the composer name as well. and then enter some information for the genre and then the keywords can be any information that you find useful for organizing your music library um, such as voicings, in instrumentation, language, uh, maybe the poet or librettist if it's a vocal work, that kind of thing. And I'll just leave the keywords blank for now. And then you can see that there are some other settings like difficulty rating. The song assignment menu bar is to let you link uh, 
MP3 or other audio file, for example, for practice pur purposes when you're reading through the score, you can also listen to the piece. And um, in case you're wondering where the information in this uh, window came from originally, it's actually in your PDF file metadata. So if you, if you or whoever created your PDF score file had some entered some uh, metadata for the author and title of the PDF file. That's what's going to show up here. And it may or, not, may or not be accurate, so you'll want to go in there and fix that. And the reason it's important to do that is because it makes things a lot easier to find in your music library, as I will show you later. So let's go ahead and um, tap Done to save this information. And now you can see I brought up the menu bar again, and the, it now has the correct title for the piece. So let's quickly take a look at some of the other tools in the menu bar. So going from right to left, on the right top right corner, you've got the toolbox, and that gives you access to a, most of the Fourscore tools and settings that you'll be using. Um, just a note. If you've already installed Fourscore and tried opening it and looking at the toolbox, if you haven't imported any scores yet, you won't see this complete list of tools. So don't be alarmed. Just make sure that you import a score first, and then when you open the toolbox, you'll see the full list of tools. Moving on to this icon on the left of the toolbox that has the two arrows. That is for entering performance mode. If I tap it and go into performance mode, I won't go into too much detail about how that works. Go take a look at the manual for more information. But basically, performance mode is a way to be able to turn pages easily in your score without accidentally activating any of Fourscore's tools or features. Then to the left of that, we have the metronome icon, which brings up the metronome. And check out my YouTube channel for a tutorial with more details on how that works. Passing over the title in the center to the left side, we have got the magnifying glass, which brings up the search tool, which I'll discuss in a little more detail later. And then to the left of that, the book is for the bookmarks tool, and that's also going to be covered in a separate tutorial, so stay tuned for that. And then finally, the music note opens up the music library menu. So this is a good time to segue into how do you organize and find your scores in Fourscore. So this and the search tool are the main two ways of doing that. You can see on this menu bar, um, I've got a list of composers that uh, are set up and these are imported from the information that I entered about the piece earlier in the title bar window that I pulled up. So for example, this is a Bruckner piece, so now I have uh, Bruckner here, and if I tap on his name, that brings up this piece. And that's the main reason why it's important to enter the title composer and other information about the piece, so that you can see it displayed in this list. And uh, here at the bottom you've got unknown composer for files where that information is missing. And then um, also notice that for a lot of these windows in the music library menu you have the option of pulling down and revealing this search window and that lets you search by the criteria that are being displayed. So there's an example of how that works. Also notice the row of buttons at the top of the music library menu, which correspond to different ways to list the pieces in your library. So we've got composer here, uh, there's keyword and genre, and all of those are listings that are generated from the information that you enter about the piece. And then set list is a different feature, that's a way to set up collections of music and again that's a topic for a different tutorial so stay tuned for one on that and then on the top right corner there's an edit button so that if you want to make any changes to your listings 
you can select things and then you've got uh, um, options for resetting, deleting, or renaming. Now there are a couple of important score lists in the music library menu that are a little bit hidden but they are pretty helpful to know about. And that is if you go to Composer and then the top item All Scores you'll see a couple of listings for the scores by title so you can see them sorted alphabetically and also newest and the newest listing is really useful if you've been importing scores into Fourscore and they don't necessarily already have the title and composer information so you might not be able to find them in the other listings this is where you can go in and open them up from this menu so that covers the basics of working with the music library menu. Let's move on to annotation and how to make markings on your score. So to access the annotation toolbar, tap on the score to bring up the menu bar, then tap on the toolbox, and then underneath edit this score, tap on annotate. And that brings up the annotation toolbar. It's a little bit arduous to bring that up, but if you check my other tutorial annotation basics, you'll learn some shortcuts for making that a little bit faster to access. So there are several annotation tools here. One of them is for entering text, that's the type tool. And if I tap on the type button at the top, then I can tap on the location in the score where I'd like to put the marking, and then use the keyboard to enter whatever text I'd like. And then Notice that it's also got these blue circles, which are drag handles that allow me to reposition the text if I want. I can also make freehand annotations on the score using the draw tool. So if I tap on the draw button at the top, and then tap on the pencil icon over to the right of the toolbar, then I can select whatever kind of pen I'd like to use, and then make markings on the score using the pen. And the draw menu also has another interesting feature, which is the stamps feature. So if I choose stamps from the menu here, and then if I tap on this arrow over to the right of the menu item, then I have access to a whole series of music notation markings. You can actually swipe back and forth to see more of them. And I can enter those and I can select one of those and then tap on the score to place it on the page. And then there are a couple of other tools here. The erase tool, which I can get to by tapping on the erase button, will let me erase markings that I made using the draw tool. So for example, this crescendo marking here, let's clean that up a little to make it more even looking. And then the clear tool will remove all of the annotations from the page. So for example, if I tap on the clear button and then I tap anywhere on the page, that would get rid of all the markings. I'm not going to do that right now so that I can show you how to save the annotations. And that's very important to do. So um, if you are happy with the annotations you've made on the page, you can press the Done button in the top right to make sure that those are saved. And then likewise, um, if you want to ignore any of the changes that you've made, you can press the Cancel button over in the left, top left corner to cancel out of the annotations you've made. We've now covered all of the basic steps for getting started with Fourscore. If you'd like to learn more, here are some suggested topics to explore on your own to help you make the most out of Fourscore. Some of them are covered in tutorials on my YouTube channel, and they're also described in the Fourscore manual, which you can access by bringing up the toolbar under the toolbox in the More section under Learn. That's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching.